Hey everybody, we are live. This is the Digital Marketing Excellence Show. I am Eric Enga. I'm your host today and the CEO of Stone Temple Consulting. This is actually a jointly uh, sponsored or promoted performance together with Plus Your Business. Uh, and I'm excited to uh, have as our special guest uh, for a second time, Martin Shervington, and also my hangout on air mentor, uh, uh, Ronnie uh, Bincer uh, here for today's show. This is a hundred percent, we hope, a hundred percent Q&A event. We actually want to take your questions. We had a show a couple of weeks ago. It was like really very successful. Tremendous amount of engagement. Uh, so this is meant to be an all engagement event. So uh, hopefully you fire some stuff off. And we are going to bring in some questions from last week or the show from two weeks ago. Uh, uh, for things that we didn't get to uh, back then. Uh, but as usual, I'd like to start, uh, uh, Martin, if you could uh, give yourself your own introduction, and then we'll do Ronnie, and we'll go on. We'll dive in. Thanks, Eric. Um, Martin Shervington. I run two communities on Google+. One is Plus Your Life, which is inspiration, education, learning, um, a lot of TED Talks and things like that. And the other one is Plus Your Business. And that's very much focused on Google Plus, its applications in business, kind of, kind of who's in the name. And um, I have plusyourbusiness.com, which is a learning resource center, uh, which has just launched the Google Semantic Search course and has got a lot more coming on Google Plus engagement over the, the next few months. Yeah, and I, I got to just say, uh, uh, Martin puts out so much fantastic stuff. Uh, if you're trying to learn uh, this environment, uh, uh, and learn how to succeed. It's just a constant stream of stuff coming out. It's it's wonderful. Um, and Ronnie. Yes, my name is Ronnie Bincer. I'm known as the Hangout Helper. I help people learn how to use this phenomenal communication tool we are using right now called Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. And I have a private membership environment called Hangout Mastery. So if you want to try to master and keep up with all the changes that are constantly happening, then you might want to sign up for that. I've also started out with a background of search engine optimization tied to specifically video, video SEO. And so this space, in my mind, is one of the neatest and most evolving and powerful environments, not only for talking about technology, but anything and everything you want to do. So you really literally can have your own TV not network or broadcasting channel right here with Google Plus and Hangouts on Air for free. Yeah, I, I think having your own broadcasting channel is actually a really bad idea. I don't know who would do that. <laughs> oh, yes. no, sorry. Um, in any case, um, uh, so uh, I think we wanted to start with just a little bit of opening discussion and then go to Q&A from there. Uh, we wanted to pick up kind of where we were last uh, time, which is how do you get started, right? And, and how does that evolve over time? So... Um, uh, Martin, you want to start us off, and then we'll just yeah. let the discussion flow from there. So I'll return to the, the metaphor that I used last time, which is people have just arrived in a new place, and it's thriving now. I mean, Google Plus has been going for coming up two and a half years, and there's a lot going on. And the first thing that people, as a suggestion, should do is just go and have a look around and start to understand the environment, start to, to listen to conversations, start to, to see maybe in communities what people are talking about, uh, start to maybe add in some circles, and before they post lots of content, and this is assuming they've put their profile together and they've got the picture and they've done authorship and things like this, but instead of posting lots of their own content to start with, is through the listening process, start to engage, start to plus one, start to comment, start to share other people's content so that they know that you're there, that you're listening, that you want to connect with them, that you want to, by engaging with them, make a network which looks a bit like theirs. So if you're into science stuff, you go and find the people who are also into science and you connect and engage with them. Uh, if you're into uh, mountain climbing, then go and find those people, if that's the sort of network that you want to build. But the first stage, and myself and Ronnie have been talking about this a lot, is that it does change after a while. But, but the first stage is, is to go out and to give to other people the attention, as opposed to trying to get the attention for yourself. I'll pause there. That sounds good. I'll pick up there. Go for it. Um, when I was talking about, this was from the last show as well, the idea that you're going to want to search for what you're interested in or what you want to find before you search for the who. 
So I don't think it's as wise inside Google Plus to start out just looking for people you know already, but it's best to base it on your content that you're interested in, either that you know, that you're an expert in, or that you want to find out more about, and then develop relationships with those that you've found there, because you're going to find people talking about almost anything here. And if you start gathering them together into circles, then it's going to be easier for you to see what they're talking about, and at some point you will then connect with certain people, and when I say connect, that means you're adding comments to their postings. You're sharing their content, and that is going to help basically bring you up higher on their radar. They're going to start to pay attention to you. Then the interaction can happen more often, and then, in essence, it's almost like you've earned your place to be able to then broadcast or communicate some of your things, and they will actually pay attention to it and start commenting, interacting, and doing the same thing that you've been doing with them for your first time. So listening first, engaging first, then starting to communicate what you want to say out there I think is one of the best tips and also real big but a lot of people forget post to the public. Don't just post to these little circles of people that you've gathered. Even if they're large circles of people you still want to post to the public circle so that others potentially can find you and then start to communicate and interact with you. Yeah, I actually want to take up a sort of a common question that I hear uh, is, well, okay, there's only uh, a couple hundred people following me, so when I, I reshare somebody's influencers, some influencer stuff, I'm, I'm hardly doing anything for them. I'm only putting it in front of 200 people, and those 200 people already follow them anyway. Uh, and I think people have this fear. But I, I think the main thing that people are looking for is they want to see that you are going to participate in the community. They want to see that you're going to be a part of it. They're not measuring it so mechanically. I know I have that reaction is when someone uh, shares my stuff. Uh, I'll always go out and interact with them because that's how you get to get large followings is by being interactive. So it, I think it makes it kind of easy for people to get in. Yeah, and Eric, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree, or this is a nice way to phrase it and say you must agree, wouldn't you agree that when someone shares our content and adds some nice commentary above, above it, you know, while they're sharing, they don't just share it, but they actually add a little bit of something to give it some relevance to why they think it's important, that that actually adds value to what we're doing, whether it's going out to 300 people or it's going out to 300,000 people. It doesn't really matter. Right, and that added value becomes resharable. And that was and Mark was saying that last time. I think he was the one that said, instead of just sharing, you know, add a bit of the the context to add your opinion, add your view. And in fact, since that, um, myself and Mervic Home put together a infographic, and I think it only came out about last week. And I know it's had, had sort of yeah, it was last week. Yes, I shared yeah, it. So, I shared so it. that's got a lot. Oh, well, thanks, Ronnie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's got a lot of these tips on for the first month. So in fact, it was probably after the last hangout. I thought, okay, let's pull all of this together into the first month. So you never know. Out of this one, there may be another infographic coming. Yeah. We get some questions. Eric, I'm going to bring up a comment because it's appropriate to this, and it talks about sharing or posting. So I'm going to bring that up, and if you want to highlight it, here it is. It's yeah. um, it's asking, do I post twice to the community and to the public? And there was a longer question, in fact, let me highlight it here. This is the, the longer version. Community, should I post public or into communities? When I post into a community, does it only go to that community and my page? And yeah. if there's a lot of detail about... There's a, yeah, there's a lot there. Shall I, shall I unpick it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. So let's talk about three different things. Let's talk about profile, and let's talk about page, and then let's talk about communities, because this is going to extend it a little bit beyond that question probably, but it, it would be useful to understand the flow. So to start with, if you share to your profile, uh, that's public, and you share publicly, that's got the opportunity for everybody to see it on your profile. That's the first thing. If you share from your page, and that's public, it can be everybody has got the opportunity to see it from the page. Now, if you share it into a community, the people that will see it within that community from that initial posting need to be a member of that community. And what people can then do is share that content back out of the community, assuming it's a public community, and that flow it back into the stream. 
Now, what this means is when you understand, when you get it in your head, what these things are and how they all fit together, you can flow content from your profile to communities to, to your page and so on. So let's just give it a quick example. If you post something on your profile, and let's say six hours later, it doesn't matter about the time, but a little bit later, you think, do you know what? It'd be lovely for these people in this community to see this because it, people are obviously engaging on it and really enjoying it. I'd like to share it into a social media community because it's relevant. I'm going to put it in the right category and then I'll write some context and I'm going to share it in. If you do that, one of the things to consider is how it will then appear on your profile. And unless you've unchecked the box of show or it's either show or not show post into communities on your profile then it's going to appear and if you do it many many times and you share it into lots of communities then it's going to look a little bit spammy on your profile so that's one thing to consider is what is displayed on your profile okay next thing if you share from a page and you share publicly from the, uh, on, on that page and you want, and this picks up another question that uh, ooh, somebody had it earlier. Let's have a look if I can scroll back down. Marilyn Moore, so this picks up yep. a little bit here. Um, if you share publicly on your page, then you decide that you want, you've got a bigger network on your profile, you share it via your profile, you might well find that a lot of people, if you've got a related network to that page content, and this is the key thing, if, you, if you've got a network which loves cat gifts, and you share a page, uh, the, 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 a post rather, from the page that is a cat gif, it's likely it's going to go through your network and fly. And the same would be for science, or the same would be for literature, or the same for whatever. So your network will determine people's response to the content. So you can share that that way. But the page can also share into communities. But again, the same point is about do you want it to appear on your profile? You're looking very serious, you two. Um, I was reading some of the additional comments exactly. flowing in. So, so, yeah. but all of it, a lot of it takes practice to understand and then build up this mental model of where does the content go, where does it stay, will people engage with it, where I put it. So all of it depends, but when you start to test, and it's very gently testing because you don't want to fire stuff into a community and people think, hold on a second, you should be sharing that on your profile already. Why are you sharing this in? Is this community content? Are you looking for a discussion? And again, read the guidelines of the community really to decide that. Now, I can get really convoluted with this, so I'm going to, again, let me quiet. Let me uh, summarize it with a, di a slightly different angle, and then we'll probably move on to other questions. When it talks about communities, in my mind, a community is for topic-based discussions. It's a round of specific topic generally, and that's one of the purposes of communities. So if you are sharing something that you think the entire world should see, then just share it on your profile or your page publicly and just let everybody see it. If you feel that it's more appropriate to be focused primarily for that particular topic, then go ahead and share it into the community. And unless you've unchecked that box that's part of your settings, it'll automatically also show up inside your profile. The key is if you are sharing that same content to multiple communities, you want to be careful. And this is something that some of us do, and we're not trying to be spammy. I'll give you an example. I am a Hangout guy. I, I help people with Hangouts. I happen to moderate multiple communities that are focused around Hangouts. So when I make an announcement of something new that I just discovered about the new Hangout on Air tool or something, I tend to want to let all of these different communities know about it. And so as a result, if I simply shared to all 10 of them, it's going to look real spammy when you go onto my profile and see the same post over and over and over again. So I have elected to go to my settings and uncheck the box so that when I share something to a community, it just shows up there and it is not showing on my profile stream. And that's because of the situation where I feel it's appropriate to share the same things to multiple communities. But for most people, that's probably not the situation. So it's fine to leave the visibility of your share to a profile to also show inside your profile. I'm sorry, to a community to also show inside your profile. Particularly if you've had other posts that go in between as well, and that's the thing. Then it breaks up the uh, on the profile page. But no, I agree, Ronnie. Of course, the other thing to be concerned about is that there's a lot of overlap of people between these communities. So there's several communities that talk about Hangouts, Ronnie. Um, there's going to be people in common in all of those, so they're going to see the post over and over again from you. 
Yeah. Um, so, so that's something that you need to put some yeah. thought into too, right? Certainly, yeah, and they, they don't seem to mind, at least the ones I, I share. Now, can, I, I throw, can I throw out another th thing in relation to I mean, it's different, really, because people are used to your content and they want to make sh sure they can see it. And some people may not be at that point where they've, they've nurtured. Certainly, certainly. Uh, but there's something else, which is that there isn't going to be one post that is the answer to whatever you're trying to achieve. It's going to be a constant relationship build. It's going to be lots of content creation. You, you might have ones that do better than others, but it's about being consistent with the, the, the quality of content that you're producing, as I see it. And it's not thinking, why, wow, if I can get a, a, you know, 150 shares on this post, then suddenly, because you'll get it, and you can put it in the communities, and people may well share, but what are you going to do next? And it's better to be looking at building the relationships and better to go back to, you know, look at other people's content, look at making sure you're building the network, make sure you're connecting with them, than it is to try and get a really kind of like huge peak, because it takes time. It all takes time. Before we leave this, some, the person that asked the question is asking, can you show me the box? So I'm trying to find it on my settings and then do a screen share of that. So well, one, while you're doing that, I'm going to pop up one too, which is... Okay. So this is from Amber. Uh, sorry, I got a blue box for I guess. Uh, there we go. Um, let's see if I got it right. First, I post it publicly, and then I share it in communities from my original posts. Right. Now, it depends. So on this one, it, it, everything depends, and it's really you mapping the territories. So regularly, I'll initiate posts within the community, and then I'll share it from the community back to my profile. Now, when I do that, if people want to go to the original post, they have to join the community to be able to comment on it. So that could be a tactic if you want people to actually go into the community and have a look around and do that. So that might be there. Now, if you've got to think about the shares as well. Is it shows up as a share. When you, if you initiate in the community and you share it, that shows as one share, which this is, this is another this is a tip. I, I probably said this last time. No one likes a lonely post. When there's no plus ones and there's no shares and there's no comments and it's been sitting there for a while, then the social risk of that po post begins to become quite high. So people go, yeah, there's probably something wrong with it. Nobody's plus Whereas if some, you have lots of plus ones, lots of comments, lots of shares, then it's likely that people go, oh, there's something happening here. So again, think about where do you want that share to show up. And if you have it on your profile, you've got the network and you share it from your profile into the community, that shows up as a share. On the post, but said a lot of this is actually building the model of, of how you can flow things around and what's reasonable within the guidelines of those interest groups like the communities. So right here, I am on my settings page, and there's an area that says under the profile, show your Google Plus communities posts on the post tab of your Google Plus profile. I have got mine unchecked by default; it is checked. So I'm just going to uncheck it again. So, but and someone else is asking a question about private communities. I can see. And Debbie, it will show to you or to anybody who has the right to see that content. It would be the same as um, if you share it to a private circle. But that's, that a, that's a good point to bring up. If you make a post inside Google+, and it's not to the public, it's just to a limited number of people, that's considered what's called a private post. You can see that. They, whoever is also included in that share of the post can also see it on your profile but the average person cannot and the way you can verify that is you can go to the very top of your post I'm sorry your profile and tell it to view as the public and when you change that then you see a different perspective of what the public sees on your profile and that's one easy way to see and verify that yeah not everybody's seeing my private conversation with my with my kids or whatever right. Can I, can I dive in? And Michael Mason wants me to do a quote, which I will. I will do, do <laughs> the, the quote from last time. But if you haven't built your network yet and you're looking for engagement on a particular post that you've created and, and it's very important to you and you decide to put it into a community, then that would be an appropriate approach if it's right for that community. Because if you haven't got your network, here comes the quote, um, if a post... What, I, what was it? Somebody have to tell if me. If a post falls no, in don't, the say, don't take it away from me, Ronnie. Don't, oh. don't, I'll have to, just, I've got to do it again. I've got to compose. Right? Ready? It's all anticipation. If a post falls in the stream and there's no one there to see it, does it make a splash? 
You okay now, Michael? Got that? Okay. So, the, but the point is, if you haven't got a network, putting your own stuff out there is kind of it, you're not going to get a huge amount of engagement. This is why it's better to plus one comment, share, contextualize, add a bit of content, lots of other people's stuff until you get to a point. And I might even put some figures on it. Maybe. 500, 750, 1,000 people having circled you back, whatever it is, and it might be 250, but you need the engagement to start to naturally happen. It's a weird process that occurs, is that it just happens. People will start to see that you're engaging, they'll come and engage with you, and they will see what sort of content. And if you want, if everybody, if you only want a science network, then mainly posting science stuff is probably what you're going to end up doing. But if you want to become part of the broader community, then people post lots of things on different meme days, so broaden up your perspective of what you, you do, and if you like photography or if you like music, and then posting that kind of content allows other people to find things to connect with you around. Okay. Here's a comment. Someone's just asking early on, saying, can I post questions via mobile? The answer is yes. So I'm going to actually screen share something because I want to highlight another part of this process that's worth talking about, which is... Um, you know, how you can go about being creative. Um, uh, you know, here's a post, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, it's by John Dunn. You can see it down here on the bottom. Um, he, he put this post up a, a few days ago. Uh, had uh, about 700 followers, I think, at the time he did it. I actually haven't checked where he is now. Uh, but as you can see, he, he, he got an enormous response. And, 137 um, reshares for those that can't read but, that. But that's the, but he made it about other people, and he put yes. together saying, "Why don't you add these guys?" It wasn't about him saying, "Add me to circles, folks." You know, and this is the uh, this is then moving into the next thing of once you've watched and listened and start to see who's going on and what you start to go, "Hey, this is what this person says. This is what they did. This is," the, and you start to bring together, and that's a very common tactic that people are using is to go out and curate other people's content, put them into to nice book, and they're curating people, creating uh, creating circles as well. I mean, I'm a big fan of creating circles. Um, so I agree totally. It's a great response. Yeah, and he did, uh, yeah, so it was really great for him. Uh, hang on, i got to clear this thing out uh, here. Um, there we go. Am I showing up? No. No, not quite yet. Oh, yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm confusing. Screen share oh, with comments. Yeah, yeah. Eyeballs. You know how that goes, right? Okay. So, um, <laughs> can, can I, can I pick up? up on a couple of questions? Yeah, or, go for it. Vivek and Ander, no, I'm not saying that um, you should go back and delete any of the posts that don't get interaction. I'm not sure where that comes from. Well, um, you, you were saying that if something is in a community and you've shared a post that doesn't seem to have any activity, it's not very good. It's giving poor social signals. And so he's oh, potentially no, no, saying, not, do you well, want to delete that post? No, okay. Uh, so we've got to be careful with social signals. That's the thing. I, I was actually talking about social risk. I'm not talking about social signals because that means something else. Uh, I might have um, misspoke yeah. then. He may have, okay. you may no, have, no, whatever. In terms of should you go back and delete it? No, I think that it's just calibrating what's appropriate. More to do with that. Correct. That's what I'd say. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and I do yeah. this all the time, by the way. Uh, fire uh, short, fire long, fire for effect. Yeah, I mean, for a long time, I mean, I do things that I'm just related to the blogging world, right? Like, I post on a lot of different sites, and I, I actually go and see if my social sharing of articles I write does well compared to other people that write on that site. Um, and there's one of two things I can take from that. I might be putting out the wrong content, and that's a, if, I, if it isn't, right? Uh, or it might be the wrong environment for me if I'm talking in the community and nobody's responding. So there's a lot of ways to take signals out of that. Here's a good one. What is plus one? There's many things a plus one can mean. This post on that, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, we might as well. I'm, I'm going to throw out a little quick one, and then you can follow up if you like. Plus one to me, if it depends on what it is. If you are plus oneing a post, then it's recommending that post. You're saying you like that post. You want other people to potentially see it based on your recommendation. And also, plus oneing a comment in my mind is simply acknowledging. Sometimes it's saying, I agree. Sometimes it's just saying, I see your comment. So there's a difference between plus wanting the actual original content or the post versus the comment. OK. That's perfect, Ronnie. No, don't need any more. It's fine. Okay. We've got lots of other <laughs> questions. Can we, can we pick up some of the others? Yeah, no, I have one here that I want to oh. push about. Uh, uh, there we go, from Neil Faree. 
Um, so this is a bit more advanced question. Is there a best practices formula for using friends and me without uh, hashtag NS? So hashtag NS, for those that don't know, for those that are not familiar with uh, friends plus me, is a no share. Why don't we say what friends plus me is? Because yeah, I'm going to come on to that now. And then, all right. So um, um, what, it, what it means, friends plus me allows you to distribute your content from a Google plus profile or Google plus page, um, and actually the, the ones you put into communities as well, to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and, and other services. And when you put NS on it, it means that you don't want it distributed to anywhere apart from the Google Plus platforms. So that's basically how it works. You can also, I won't go into the detail, but you can distribute it to specific ones and leave off the others using different hashtags. Is there a best practice? I actually think, Neil, we're still trying to work it out. I think that I don't like NS, as, as a, and I've asked for it to change, and, uh, and the developers are, 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 say they're going to do it. Um, and one thing I do as a tip, quite often these days, if I use NS, I post it, and then I go back and I delete the NS, and, and uh, that will take off the, the upper right um, hashtag there as well. So it means that I've prevented it being shared to the other networks, and then I just remove it, and it looks as if like I posted it to Google+. So there's no sign that there's no NS, NS, no sign. It, it, nice. There we go. It's gone. So uh, let me ask you a question, because I, I've only recently started using this friends plus me thing. Yeah. I have learned that when I reshare someone's content and I add my valuable commentary on the top, that the that the friends plus me just simply shares the original and never adds my commentary. Is that normal behavior? If you so say that again, Ronnie. If I say Martin, you make a post, and I want to I want to reshare that, and I add this is Martin's post. Here's why I think it's really important. I give some five lines of really important good stuff. When it's published to Facebook or to Twitter, it seems to go without my extra commentary. And I, that's why I think I'm starting to use the NS more often if I can remember to do it. Well, that's interesting. Let me, I'm going to check that. Talk amongst okay. yourselves. Well, that... <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> um, Anyways, let me bring uh, up... The... Ronnie, uh, I'm sorry. Martin will return soon. Um... <laughs> no, no, Ronnie, I don't have that experience. You don't? Well, no, then I must I, have I something set up. Send, it sends out the top line as well because I, I just did. Yeah, you know, I did one yesterday. You'll have to well. learn me how to do it right because apparently yeah. I've set it up wrong. Okay, I'll have a look at. Yeah. Okay. Can I just come on to a really basic one, but uh, but important? Do I think um, so? Do should somebody Rick um, Eliasson, do you plus one your own post to get the ball rolling, or do you see it's Ooh. a bit self-indulgent? If you're the only person that's plus your post then it's fairly obvious that you've plussed your post. And I'd say no, in a way. I don't think it gets a ball rolling. I think it ends up being more of a, more of a negative on the post that, that, that you've done that. Also, sharing your own post, well, it, it depends. <laughs> sometimes people share posts. Sometimes people put inappropriate posts into communities, and then they share it themselves so that it looks as if somebody else has shared it. And I'm going to cut the communities. We spot it as moderators, and we know what's going on. Um, but that's the sort of thing that happens as well. But again, you know, it, it, part of it is it's just feeling around. So Marilyn, I'm just going to pick up on the comments that you made. Um, moder it's down to the moderators whether they want the, the, the posts in the communities. It's down to the guidelines. So sometimes in the pleasure business community, if it's too self-promotional, then I'll remove it um, because it says clearly in the guidelines that's not appropriate. So it does depend. So um, someone else, the question that's sort of following up a little bit about what's a plus one, in the past, a plus one was much more easy to say, yeah, just plus one everything, you know, that you like, that you feel is, is valuable and you're acknowledging it, but you're also mm -hmm. saying, yes, I like this. They made a change such that when you plus one something that's the primary content, it now may show up in the home stream of other people, and you, as an endorser, will be saying, Ronnie Bencer plus this thought you'd be interested in it. And that's making a difference for me. I I plus less I plus less. I plus one less. You plus with use, awareness. With awareness, yeah. I'm more yeah. thoughtful. Whereas before I would plus one everything. But what but what's happened? I think this is one of the things about the, the how things change. And we haven't talked about the, the, the plus one recommend feature probably for, for a little while. But when it came out, it was a big topic for two weeks. And now, you know, we've moved on to other things. Now we've got YouTube comments as the main thing, probably. Um, 
but there's, there's, it moves on, and the technology moves on. But to people that have just arrived, they don't necessarily understand what's happened. They don't know what extended circles are necessarily, which is what the default setting is for that. Um, but what it means is that the, the plus one gives content legs if you have it set that it's either... Well, if you have it on the default, it means that it can travel. As, as Ronnie said, it, it's actually like a, it's almost like a mini share in a way is one way to think about it. And as they keep on changing, I believe there's going to be a lot of changes that they keep on making. This is it, it, the, the platform changes, it moves, and we've got to remap and, re, and understand when we put stuff out, how does that travel? What can happen, and what are the consequences? And, it, and that's why we probably love it so much is that there's so much to learn, and it keeps on, you know, keeping us on our toes. Here's a comment. Right, I just I just pushed into the uh, the comment stream uh, that uh, uh, a post uh, a link to a post from Jana uh, Nystrom talks about 50 different things that a plus one yeah. could potentially mean. That's so, the one. So that yep. will that'll show up uh, in the message stream here yeah. shortly. Amber, Amber had a a point or a question here talking about public when people p share public and telling us that Google Plus reminds us to be careful when we are. I'm just going to summarize this. Basically, if someone has not shared a post publicly and you oh. receive it and you're trying to reshare it, it warns you and it says, hey, please keep in mind that this was not public at first. Be careful yeah. with what you're doing and how you're doing it. And sometimes it won't even let you do that share depending on... If you've had it disabled or, or whatever it comes to disabled. But I think that's... The, yeah, you can't share those publicly. Once, if That's one thing, is if you want your content to have the greatest views, then always share it publicly, as Ronnie says. If you don't share it publicly, it becomes a private share. And it means that... It used to be called a limited share, and it means that when the person shares it, a little box comes up and says, be careful, but it means you can't share it publicly. It, you have to then share it to your circles, extend the circle, specific people, or what have you. So and by not sharing the original post publicly, you're actually restricting what other people can do later. Right, and it's usually a newbie mistake. Um, yeah. And I, I highly suggest, in that case, delete that post and start over again and, and make yeah. it public. So that well, and, and one way it happens, too, is is like you, you recently shared something privately, and now you write a new post, and Google Plus sort of assumes that you're trying to share to that same limited private audience, and you have to right. remember to go make it public at that point. So that's where where you get trapped. So you have to have to pay attention and have it in your mind, okay, well, I need to make sure it's public. It's like you're you're addressing a letter and you probably ought to look to see where the letter's being sent before you just hit share. And that's something that people just don't pay attention to, but it's something that you should pay attention to. Where is it going to go when you're ready to do the share? Okay, I have another one to push here. Can I just give a real quick tip on that? It is if you, you know, when you have circles come up, uh, so you've got your public, and then you may have circles extended. You've got the special circle. And you've got all of these circles, all this stuff that's going on at the bottom. If you, if you're on a, a, a desktop and laptop, if you put the cursor in, and instead of having to click each of them to get rid of them to then decide, you just put the uh, the cursor and click the back key, uh, the delete key. On, you know, in the upper right, whatever that thing's called. Is that called delete key? Delete, and it will, yeah. and, and it will, and you hold it down, and it will zip along and delete them all. It just means you don't have to go in and click them. Real small tip, but, you know, it can be handy. There you go. Nice. Okay, not, another question from Marilyn Moore. Resharing and adding your own commentary. Is it correct that you need to reshare from the link to the original post, not use the reshare button, or, or else your commentary is lost when reshared? Your okay. commentary will be lost yeah. when your post that includes only commentary is reshared. Yeah. So this this is a dilemma for those of us that feel that we're adding valid commentary. <laughs> but Martin, if you take the example of a blog post, so if, if a person shared a blog post and you want to make sure that you put your content, and Ronnie often does this, uh, you'll go to you can go to the blog and share that one, which still will show up in the ripples of the original of the originator's blog post. We're going to get into something else, aren't we? But what, 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 um, what it means is you're then in control of your own share. So explain again. So you go to a website, you say, I love that blog post, and then you see somebody shared it on Google+, Plus. you think, oh, but I don't like what they put at the top of that. I go there, take that link, put it as an embedded link, or I can do it as a picture post and put the link in, whichever. Um, and then I write my comment and I create my own share 
afresh and new because it's got my stuff. Then it's then it's my post. But and as that, a so social yeah, if suggestion, an link, if it's an embedded link, it will still show up as a ripple for that particular blog post. So the person that originally shared it, if it was an embedded link, and you go to their ripples, which you go into the upper right and then come down to ripples, you'll see that yours has actually got a separate circle on it. And it means that you then gather, if other people share it, you gather separately to the one that was originally shared, your own set of ripples within that grander right, set. Like Eric showing you some ripples sense. right now. I hope that made sense, but we're into several different things. But, it, but before it's, it's, we go to see that. Before yeah. we get too far into the ripples part, which we may be going there, the we are one looking, is, don't understand. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, one suggestion is when you do that kind of thing and you go to the original uh, blog post, for example, and you make your own share from there, it's a good idea to do an HT or a hat tip or some kind of reference to say, thanks for helping me yeah. find this Martin, and then you plus mention his name, because then you're bringing in that social value that you saw it from Martin, but you're also... You're giving him credit for helping you find it, but you're also trying to isolate your own commentary with that so it can be shared along. Absolutely, well, and beyond that, if you're doing your own share of a post that's in myself and Ronnie and it's a blog post that we've put out, unless you plus our names, we don't know that you've shared it. Not because you haven't shared it from the post we put out when we get notification. So you want to have to pull plus our names on that there. The ones that Eric just showed, sorry Eric, you're on the screen for too long. Um, I, should, I, should, I could, could have said quite. The ones that Eric just showed don't actually have separate ones, so that all came from the all of them came from the original share from one post. Now, when we're talking about communities and we're talking about um, posts publicly, you will find if you look at public shares and total shares, if you share it into a community, you won't see those on the ripples. It's only on the public shares. So you start to go, okay, what does that mean? And if you're looking for your total reach and your best reach for your content, and you're looking from an SEO point of view, you've got to start wondering if it's not showing up in ripples, does it have exactly the same value potentially as if it was public? Now, when I when I put stuff out, I have a whole plan around how I use the public share, how I do another reshare later on, the nature of that. Do I do a big picture post for that one potentially and put a link in it? Um, and also then how I use communities, but the community shares don't show up on ripples. So we've got to be thinking about you know what Google is is registering. And there are potentially tests that could be done, Eric, um, around that as well. And we could find the, the, the value yep. of community shares. We could do tests around that. I think that's a really good idea. We should find someone who wants to do that, Martin. <laughs> we are almost talking doing tests. I mean, let, this is why I look so tired. We've been doing tests for weeks now. You, you're saying the, you're talking time. about ripples, and we haven't really defined what ripples are. As a simple, simplistic way of saying ripples is an easy way to track the engagement of a post, and you can see who is engaging with it, who is spreading it, who are the influencers where it grows. And when it happens, there's all kinds of really valuable information that they give us. And here's, a, here's an example of a ripple. Okay, something shared at Google Plus Helper, and you can see um, the various people who've shared it, and you can actually see it spread. Um, but this is a great this is a great example actually for for Google Plus Helper as a page, and it's Yana's page. Um, but actually, this is a while ago then. This was because now Google, okay, so it's because G plus expertise is actually the page now. So Yana shared it. I shared it from Yana's post, and we can see that the, the weight, the greater weight, which is the size of the, the ripple, has come from Yana and then me sharing on from Yana. So that's what's created the biggest bubble of shares after that original post. If I'd shared it from the Google plus, help, as it says, Google plus helper center, as opposed to from Yana's share, then there would be a ripple that's coming up. A, 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 yeah, a ripple that's coming off that would not be connected to Yana's one. That would have been separate. So this is kind of how they work. Okay, I'm going to push another version of this at you just for fun, um, and uh, hopefully I got that right. Um, so uh, this is just me uh, having some fun with you all um, because. Um, when we talk about ripples, we're always talking about shares, right? Eric, the, the screen share you were doing is now gone, so we might want to turn it back on again. Okay, so uh, I will do that. There we go. Is that, uh, we got is that it. staying there? Okay, good. 
So um, the idea here is, okay, uh, and Martin, I got into this because you talked about what's the SEO value, right? And, and to me, when I think about how these algorithms might work, and everybody, I'm just speculating, so just go with me here a little bit, okay? Uh, clearly, the ripples, which is kind of this big rectangle in the middle, is, that's a classic ripples diagram. And I'm sort of speculating that getting comments from authoritative people probably matters. Uh, maybe to some degree, possibly plus ones matter. I'm not sure on that one. But this notion of this interaction um, and engagement really is the message I'm trying to get across here with all of this um, is is a big deal. And the ripples is just one way of uh, uh, of giving you a sense of that. And I do actually want to tie this back to something that Ronnie said earlier about the importance of giving a hat tip to somebody. Um, you know, from from my point of view, when I think about this ecosystem of trying to build authority, whether Google is tracking this particular authority or, or not is a separate question. Um, if I, uh, if Ronnie has shared something, uh, and then uh, I learn about it because Mark Traphagen shared it, um, uh, and Mark is going to get lost if I reshare uh, from uh, from this. Uh, but uh, reshare that because it only is going to remember the, the Ronnie piece as the original poster. But the hat tip is important for a lot of reasons. It, and there, yes, there's to keep them in the conversation and let them come in. But people appreciate the fact, even though I'm connected directly with Ronnie, that you took the trouble to remember them that you got it from them. It's really an important relationship building thing. You got to really view this as a whole relationship game, and every step is about enhancing those relationships. So you, you tie this back to my chart, where I was really trying to capture this notion that it's all about this interaction and relationship thing. But uh, and this hat tip thing is just you know one example uh, of that. And what happens through that process is it, if you you hat tip, so you, you h forward slash t, and then plus the person's name, that person all other things being equal, is going to receive a notification. And when they receive a notification, they're going to see your face and your name and the action that you took. Now, the more times they see your face, the name, and the action that they took, that starts to make them realize the nature of content that you're sharing and who you are. And the, the, when you're starting out in particular, the, the, your name and your face going together into somebody's head so they actually know, all right, this is who... It's going to be James Worth, and I'm looking, okay, and I, I recognize I've seen him on a few threads, and Tom Coleman, Tom Coleman's fantastic, <laughs> he's all over Twitter, with, he's, he's so generous with, with, with the shout outs, considering how lazy I am with Twitter, um, but all of these people, you see their names, their faces, and you go, I know them, I start, to, I start to build a relationship with them, whereas if you don't hat tip, if you don't post people's names appropriately, um, then you can't have that opportunity of them starting to become used to you. Right, and it's actually incredibly important for people who, who get very busy on Google+. Plus. When you build large followings, that, that's why you see people referring to the bell at the top as the bell from hell, right? Uh, because you get there and suddenly, you know, you've got like an infinite number of things you can try to scroll through and try to recognize, you know, oh man, it's like, what do I do with all this stuff? And I really should share some of his stuff and her stuff and... Uh, and you start going nuts, and you start building a little bit of mind share in the process. So I think that's incredibly important. Let me bring up a point here, a Hangout methodology. If you're watching this Hangout live now and you're trying to check out the other people that are watching it and commenting, which, by the way, is a phenomenal way to network with people, it's a good idea if you're on a Mac to hold down the Command key. If you're on the PC, hold down the Control key when you click on their profile link because then it'll open it as a new tab and you don't have to get lost. You can come right back. You can even continue listening while you're going looking at the other people. So that's a suggestion. Okay, another discussion point for us here from T. T Rechwalski. Hopefully I got that close to right. What about the use of hashtags? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Use appropriate hashtag. Answered that question. Sounds good. <laughs> they sound great. So 
No, let's go back. No, no, come on. Let's, 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 let's say, you know, what was the question again? It's what about, it's, the, use of what about use of hashtags? We can make up your own. That's one thing a lot of people don't realize. You just make up your own. You type, type the shift three key, which is a pound or a hash sign, whatever, and you start typing text. You cannot add spaces, but you can add upper and lower case if you want to make it more legible. And this is something you can do on a regular basis. I do it with similar content using the same hashtag so that it helps people discover that content if they start doing hashtag searches. And that content also not only is limited to Google+, but that hashtag can move itself out into the Google.com world. So, Ronnie, basic question that you can answer for the audience. How do you do a hashtag search? How do you do a hashtag search? This is a dilemma. In the past, it used to be a lot easier. You click right on the hashtag, and it did a hashtag search for you. It still does that, but it's less accurate than it used to be. So what I'll do is I'll click on the hashtag inside Google+. It'll automatically start a hashtag search. Then I'll go to the very top where the search term is entered in with the pound symbol. I'll delete the pound symbol and then hit search again, and it tends to give me more content. That but that isn't a hashtag search, then. That's a content search. I mean, that's a different nature of search, essentially. Okay. Because you're not looking for ones that have got the hashtag. But I, I, know, what, I know what you're saying, because the, the other thing is actually what your filters are on. Are you filtering from... See, it gets dark. In, look how dark it gets in the UK by quarter past four. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> there, we have things called lights. You should turn yeah, on Yeah, I, 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 I forgot to plug everything in. I thought I'd just go into that mellow phase. The last like 30 minutes. Well, um, you know, you could try the little filter thing. You know, the special filter thing. See if that works for you. Blue box yourself and then choose yeah. enhance. Do you know what? That's why we got you here, Ronnie. Yeah. Well, there or go. there's another right. one called lighten or something. Do you like think that, that, just to point out, this isn't my usual look. This is November for those that, oh, oh, is that kind of good or not? It's better. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. This is this is November. This is for charity, everybody. Um, but yes, yeah, well, so, yeah, I, mean, I did fire up a lot about that. hashtags that we could talk about because it, when you start making your own up, you start to get into creating your own meme days potentially and trying to bring people together. I mean, that's that's a great thing about hashtags is that it it means that there's something potential. Well, one of the uses it's something potentially that other people can go. Oh, I love. Cat gifts. I always use this as an example. It's, it's benign, isn't it? Um, or I love Science Sunday, or I love whatever it is. And if people are searching for that content, it becomes its own stream. That's the thing with the hashtags. You can you can click, as Ronnie said, you can click on the hashtag, and you can go to the stream and watch it like a stream of content coming through. And okay, you've got to refresh, but it still comes through. Do you have to refresh on that? Actually, that's a very good point. I believe you do, or you have, have the the that says, you have to click the little button that says "New posts have yeah. come up." Yeah. So, these things, it's uh, there used to be a flood. Do you remember those days, Ronnie? Yeah, back when it was easy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And when you manage, people were talking about managing circles. Honestly, there were days that you'd sit there and think, "I need to sort my circles out." I have got just literally torrents of content coming at you, and you couldn't stop it. The only way was to manage your circles better. But, yeah, there we go. So, Eric, you've got something highlighted here. I do. Okay, so the question is, how are you blue boxing the questions as they are asked? So this is a Hangout helper type tip. Uh, do you want me to do it, Ronnie, or do you want to do sure. it? Sure. No, go for it, and I'll add to it if I feel I need to. You, you go. Uh, okay, so, uh, and it relates to a question that was asked earlier. How come we aren't using the Q&A interface? Mm -hmm. um, and and so another topic too. Yes, it is. But uh, we are using an app called the Comment Tracker, uh, and it is a, an additional app that, when you have it uh, installed, shows up on the left side of your Hangout uh, interface. Uh, as Ronnie once famously famously said, after they did one of their recent updates, you have to move your mouse to see it. Uh, but uh, um, when you load that app up, you are able to highlight a question, um, and um, that question, um, by pressing a little eye icon, and that question will pop up in the interface, and then you can blue box it. So I'll show you right now. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna highlight something uh, here in the comment tracker, and you'll you'll see suddenly I get replaced. Uh, by uh, Martin Sherrington is never in the dark. There you go. There's a fan for you, Martin. Um, and uh, I haven't blue boxed it, so you could see when Ronnie laughs or somebody so, else. Yeah, 
blue boxing and highlighting a comment are two slightly different things. However, you can do the two together. So if Eric, as the host, blue boxes one of the thumbnails that's showing a comment, then that's the primary stream that's being recorded and broadcast. If he simply turns on the eyeball, it's then visible on that thumbnail, but until or unless he blue boxes it, it's only visible when the sound is coming from that, like, for example, Eric's reading it because he has brought it onto the screen. It's a little tricky, honestly, um, this comment tracker thing, but the Q&A app is another app that we probably shouldn't go too much into it, but it's one of those things that's great for answering questions, um, but it takes away a little bit of the social engagement in my mind, which is why I was encouraging Eric not to use it for the show. Right. Okay, we have a question that Martin wants to question here. This may be a little known fact, so the question here, if you don't want to see certain content that will have hashtags now attached to it pretty naturally, if you have a picture of a cat, Google are likely to have added a hashtag to it even if a person didn't use a hashtag. So if you don't like cats and you don't like cats a day and you don't like cats a day every day, etc., there's a Chrome extension, if you're using Google Chrome, that allows you to get rid of the hashtags. Now, I don't know what it's called, except I know that I've got it on a page on my site, so we can find the link and, and put that in the thread. Um, you can add the extension in, you can choose what hashtags link I think that you don't want. Assuming it's still around, assuming it still works, but that was something that was around a while ago. Okay. Excellent. Okay. All right, so one other question uh, from Brian Hayes that's a... Uh, uh, well, I'll pop it here, but it's uh, too long to get the whole question. Uh, but he wants to discuss cover photos um, and, you know, uh, or your hover card photos. You could, you know, or your hover cards. Those are both things that we could talk about for uh, a little bit here. The easiest thing I can give rather than giving specific dimensions is to say that the aspect ratio is a 16 by 9. It's similar to a wide video is the format you're going to want to use. And the higher the quality your image, the better it's going to look depending on the particular device that's viewing it. Because some people are actually looking at Google Plus on a big screen TV. So you, you, you might want to take that into account. But the bottom line is it's a 16 by 9 ratio, meaning it's wider than it is tall. And now with the latest change, the very center of the image is repeated over on the left side with sort of a blur over it. And then some of your details are visible on that left edge. And the person to get the templates from is Stefan Hovnanian. So Brian Hayes, uh, Stefan will have all of that up to date. And if there's any doubt, come into the, the Plushy Business community and we'll, we'll get the link for you. Right, and it is when you, when you mouse over somebody's name, there's a thing that pops up which is called a hover card. And Stefan has done some really nice articles talking about the value of the hover card. This is one of the very first things people see when they're looking around and they will make a decision as to whether they want to work further and know you more based on what they see right there. There we yeah, go. And, and thank you. We've got it there. So. Yes. Yeah. So here's a, a Kritika. Uh, sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. I think you told me how to pronounce it once, so I apologize for that. I'm still getting it wrong. But uh, it's in the comment stream, uh, uh, the questions from, uh, uh, or rather the link to uh, Stefan Hovnanian's resources. So, um, okay. So we have six minutes left. Do we want to take uh, one more question and then dive into a wrap-up? Let's see what we've got. I'm just, I'm just scanning through the questions. By the way, great questions, everybody. Thank you so much for... Uh, Engaging us with lots of uh, good different things uh, to to talk I'll about. Bring this, I'll bring this one up from Marilyn, saying that she agrees that the Q and A app is more restrictive and doesn't invite engagement as well as the comment tracker. Primarily because once you launch this Q and A app, it takes over the screen, and you can't see all the other activity that's going on. If you want to stay focused in an environment that's just constantly answering questions only, and and they're being marked in the video, it's a really good app. It's just, in my mind, it's not as valuable in the social space. Right. And, I mean, you think about a Hangout uh, event like this, too. I mean, I've been doing these now since August, uh, uh, so uh, I have at least a little bit of experience with them. Uh, it's fascinating to me because it's really, it is really all about engagement, right? And yeah. the fact that we're able to do something like this and have a Q&A event and literally be pulling things interactively out of the... Uh, 
the stream and talking with people is you know it's just awesome. And it yeah, really this is in, this is Andrew calling me out on being too politically correct. He's saying that it takes a lot away from the social engagement, and I probably would agree with that. Or actually, I do. There you go. I'm it's, just trying to be polite to the people that do the hangout programming stuff. Okay, and one more question. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's go with. Uh, I've just brought this one up because I think it's an interesting one for people. We could, we could do two more. All right. There you go. I love well, you guys. Let's do yours. We, we have you up. <laughs> Read it. Um, so, so, doing it. Bonnie first, how do you monetize your expertise? How do I monetize my expertise? Thank yeah. you. Um, what I do is I do private sessions with people when they find out that I really know what I'm talking about with Hangouts and they're struggling and they want to learn the details. I do one on one sessions with them. And then I encourage them to join my Hangout Mastery community because that is a paid-for community where I give the latest and greatest updates um, as quickly and as efficiently as I can. So I'll throw in an answer too, which is, uh, uh, well, Stone Temple Consulting is a digital marketing agency. And uh, we use uh, uh, the presence that we work on uh, um, in Hangouts to get visibility with the major brands who represent our uh, clients, and uh, we actually have landed uh, already one major brand client as a result of doing this. So it's a reputation building thing, and you got to understand. I come from an SEO background, and and I do so many things which are so not SEO uh, that are really just focused on reputation and visibility um, and hangouts. You know, are are you know one way to do that? Just get get exposure. And Martin, you have some ideas as to how you are looking to monetize. Well, I, well, to start with, I do coaching, training, consultancy around Google Plus and around marketing in general, putting in place sales funnels for small businesses. That's what I've been doing since I've been back in Wales. And with Plus Your Business, what I'm really trying to do and what I am doing is build the team. So build a, a group with expertise beyond any single one of us and, and that's coming together very well so we can take on larger larger projects. And then in the new year I might well have something which is coming out for, well it could be of interest to everybody. Um, so more on that later on but that again is, is taking expertise and, and doing something which, yeah, one of the big things that we haven't mentioned is it's making it about them, whoever the them is. And, and give in far, far more than you are trying to get. And I think that that's one thing which I'll continue to do. Um, and as you know, something, something may well come in the new year, um, but I've got ideas on, on how I can make it very inclusive and uh, hopefully a lot of fun as well. Absolutely. So we're, we're down to two minutes here, guys. Uh, do you want to add any uh, closing remarks? Have fun. Have fun. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, go on, Ronnie. I'm so, I'm so, um, <laughs> Lee, Lee, Lee wanted to come in, by the way. Lee, Lee, I, I said, Lee, you know, I'm going to start talking about moustaches if you come in, so you, you can't come into this one. Uh, yeah, there you go. So. The, key, the key is I, I love this Hangout tool. Um, it allows me to connect with people literally all over the world without worrying about geography and time zones, and that means you're going to stay up in the middle of the night sometimes. But the connections that you make with people inside of a Hangout will reflect later when you're starting to share, share their things and they're sharing yours because it has a different feel because you've met the person in essence face to face. And we said this at the end last time, I totally agree Ronnie, so much. Hangouts transform the experience and if you really want to connect with people and, and become part of the, a community then Hangouts are a great way of doing it. It transforms the relationship. And we're not um, saying it has to be a live broadcast. This no, is a no, private, no, no. private hangout between Absolutely. you and two or three other people, whatever. The more yeah. you hang out, the more you connect with people. I think that's yeah, that's a big thing. And there was something else that came up. Um, sorry, Eric, I've lost my thread. There was a question I was going to pick up. Okay. Well, there was this one that I had from Warren Chandler about the SEO value uh, of Hangouts, um, and you know, it's a great question. Um, I could speculate, and since I love to speculate, I will. Um, <laughs> that is that uh, um, it could uh, actually have, uh, I mean, look, uh, it, it, if you think about how you might construct authority signals for somebody, then you could look at, you know, uh, who they get on their hangouts, uh, who's listening in, who shares it, 
um, uh, you know, there's any manner of things. I mean, even if you don't even look at the participation in the Hangout itself, you can look at what happened with just the event invite and, and all that. So, um, uh, I think there's a, a decent chance that there's some impact on the uh, at least the mythical author rank concept or just general authority um, in general. So, well, it does around, it does within the community, isn't it? I mean, if you're hosting the events, you know, bringing people together, then that in its own right, in an old-fashioned authority way, gives you authority. You know, you're 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 getting those conversations going. I think there's one there's one parting thing I would say for me, which is if you're if you're watching this now and if you're on the the thread in particular. I believe that this is the time to be doing this. It, it, it really is. There's a, an incredible opportunity with Google Plus right now. And, you know, thanks to everybody for all the comments. So thanks for all the engagement. That's what makes it such a wonderful place. And it, it, just keep on doing it. And, you know, hopefully, I mean, if there's anything we can do to help, we've got the Plus Your Business community as well, just come and ask. And even though we sometimes get very busy on notifications, we just do our best. And, you know, hopefully that will help you know, people really get going on here. Ronnie, right. any closing remarks other than have fun? Um, have fun, but also try to use Hangouts. And remember, the big deal is share other people's stuff before you start trying to broadcast your own, and you will end up building a network primarily that is interested in what you will share eventually. So I think that's just the process that people need to get through and realize that Google Plus is different than other places. It, it just really has its own culture. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with both of you, and in particular, I, uh, I agree with the notion that there's just a huge opportunity uh, in Google Plus right now. Um, look, the, there's a tremendous amount of activity here already, uh, but there's really a tremendous uh, opportunity to engage in this platform and grow, um, and uh, there's a lot of people who haven't come over here yet. Um, and and so it's not uh, yes you'll see some people with huge followings like Martin um, uh, already has but I can tell you uh, I had about uh, you know 3,300 when I decided to engage actively in August and um, uh, you know uh, 8,600 or something like that right now whatever um, and growing rapidly so there's a really a lot of opportunity to build a real presence here definitely worthwhile. Can I, can I throw an extra bit in there, Eric, which is also for people, don't be too distracted by the numbers. Agreed. They, they, matter, they matter and they don't. And then this is, this is what I always, I always think, I don't know how often I say it, they do matter and they don't. And it's about the engagement and finding people that you like and that you relate to and that like your content and, and then, bit by bit, achieve what you want. If you want more people to visit your website, more people to, to see that content, then that sort of thing, you know, search results, all of that. But the numbers in their own right can be a distraction. If you chase the numbers, then you, you won't necessarily focus on the relationships. And then another little tidbit, because we keep wanting to add them. If you are in Google+, Plus and you're searching for what you're interested in and there's not that much going on, rejoice. Don't get discouraged. This means you can establish a foothold, a stronghold, as being the authority in that realm, and you can grow, and others, when they start coming in, will find you. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So... Uh, 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 thanks as, uh, as always guys uh, uh, for those of you who didn't get in the beginning um, this is a, a, an event uh, that I've co-promoted uh, the Digital Marketing Excellence Show has co-promoted with Plus Your Business um, uh, fantastic stuff that Martin Sherrington does uh, um, uh, to help people who are new to Google Plus you want to learn uh, about uh, Google Plus and how to do things, check out Plus Your Life and Plus Your Business and, and Martin's uh, own stream. Uh, Ronnie Bincer is the Hangout helper. Uh, he was my guide and the person that helped me uh, get started in this show. It's another fantastic resource. I'm always available and willing to answer questions as well. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the show. This is the Digital Marketing Excellence Show, and we are over and out for today. Thanks a ton. Thanks, everyone.